made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston And today we are back for episode 18 of the Georgia State Dynasty We're upgrading the opener signature skill for head coach Ian Vogt So we get some more recruiting points to add for these first like six weeks I believe So we're going to put some points into John DeAngelis Try to get him up to 500 We're also going to look through some more of our recruiting board We're going to put some points into John Booth We want to improve that defensive line We've fallen behind a little bit on him Don't want to get too far behind Same thing with Ryan Winston Could use an upgrade at secondary Put some more points into him and we're looking through some other prospects. Lawrence Willis, a halfback. We're going to put some more points into him. As that is actually one of our... I think it's our only recognized need. But we're actually going to end up taking points out of Lawrence Willis. And going for Blake Gardner. Who I just recently added to the board. Why you may ask? Because he's a lower overall. He's also a speed back. And I really want to build a nice fast team. Especially with the spread option attack. So we'll see what happens. Jeremy Johnson, the quarterback ready for next season. Is not a very fast quarterback. But I still feel like we can run with him. He's a 71 speed. It's only one slower than Ronnie Bell was last year. So I think we can still run the read option. I just think it's very important to have a nice speed halfback on the team. So that's what Blake Gardner will hopefully be for us. We're going to get into this ball game right here. We're going up against FCS Southeast. Now this will be Chattanooga when Georgia State actually plays this game next season. But... All we will have to settle for is the FCS Southeast opponent as the NCAA football EA game does not recognize the FCS teams, at least not anymore. I believe they used to have them, but not anymore. So going up against FCS Southeast, and this should be really an overmatch game. I mean, you know, we had, we had some trouble against these opponents last season, especially that game where we took a game-winning field goal at the end. But I feel like we can handle these guys now. We're a better program than we were last year. We got a lot better as this season went on last year, and I think we're even better heading into this year. So, anyway, Ronnie Bell on the run is going to pick up seven yards right there. And we have a second and three coming up for the Panthers' triple read option. I was doing a, I was doing a bit of experimenting in this game. We are using Oregon's playbook or Oregon's playbook and the 3-4 defense. We have a lot of good linebackers this year. I think one of our best linebackers from last year, Kite, Kite Dallas, is actually not a starter in the 4-3 scheme. So we decided to try out the 3-4. We'll see how it goes. But hit Lindquist Blair right there on the run. Nice throw by Ronnie Bell. 18-yard pickup right there. Now second and 10 coming up. Shotgun set. It's going to be a completion to Ross Jackson, who makes a juke inside of the 15 to about the 11-yard line. A 28-yard pickup for the Panthers. Second and 6 coming up here. Shotgun set. Three wide, one tight. And Bell's going to find Giles. Giles is going to get hit sticked. But he does get the first down, so we got first and goal coming up. Now first and goal from about the three-yard line. Hand out to Anthony Hudgens. That's actually the one-yard line, excuse me. Anthony Hudgens picks up the touchdown, and we take an early 7 to nothing lead here on top of the FCS Southeast Pirates. So here we go. Now we have a studio update for us right here. And UL Lafayette putting in a nice showing against Ole Miss. That is a conference opponent, UL Lafayette. And, uh, you know, they're playing well against an SEC team. We might have to look out for them later on. Here comes the Pirates, though, as Samson Church right there, or Shannon Church, excuse me, is going to pick up the 12-yard gain right there. Second and eight, I formation, three wide, one tight end. Church drops back. He's looking to the right side. He's going to fight his man Colt right there as Jason Colt picks up 15 yards on the game. First and 10, I formation once again. This time, Church dropping back, staying in the pocket, finds his man Morris there. Looks like a tight end, and that is going to be a 24-yard pickup for Damian Morris. Second and nine, it's going to be a triple option formation, play action, fake, Church to the left side, intercepted by Robert Dowling, no relation to Ross I. Dowling, all you Patriot fans, but that is going to be an interception for Robert Dowling, I believe he's one of our new freshmen this year, although I'm not too sure, might not be, but I know we didn't see a lot of him last year, so he is getting some of his first, uh, first team snaps, so to say, but Gerald House to the outside right here is going to pick up a nice chunk, he is running very nicely so far for these first few games, replacing Travis Evans very nicely. Here's a little read option right here. Bell's going to keep it up the middle, and he's got some room, and he's got some blockers as he will pick up the 22-yard gain right there. Now first and 10 coming up. It's going to be a read option. Bell to the outside can try to pick up a block. He will get the first down, and Georgia State already with 86 rushing yards on the day. Bell has 50 of them on six carries. Here we go, first and 10. Still 7-0. Panthers on top. It's going to be a little screen play right here. Gives it to Jordan Giles. Giles tries to make a move. He'll pick up 7 yards. Not a bad gain for a screen play. So second and 3 coming up. Bell scrambles to his right. Moves out of the pocket. Fires it. Takes the hit. Wow, what a great throw by Ronnie Bell. Jordan Giles picks up 15 yards. So here we go, first and goal. Inside of the 5-yard line. Ronnie Bell read option. He'll keep it. And that's a 1-yard touchdown run. His first of the game. The second touchdown of the game for the Panthers through the ground game, or with the ground game, I should say, and Bell picks it up right there. So we take a 14-0 lead, 
And now here we go on defense this time around. FCS Southeast back with the ball. 651 to play. Shannon Church dropping back. He's going to scramble to his right. Fire, and that is going to be caught by Jason Culp. Bit of a bad throw, very dangerous to say the least, but that is somehow brought in by Jason Culp, his second catch of the game. Third and ten coming up, empty backfield for Church. He's going to fire it to the right side near the sideline, brought in by Jerome Parker. A 20-yard gain, a very impressive catch and throw right there. So first and ten, I formation, Church going to drop back, look to his left. He finds his man Damian Morris, and Morris is going to pick up a nice gain. So the FCS Southeast offense is driving down the field right here. Third and seven coming up, pistol formation, Church. Stays in the pocket, fires it to Stewart, and that is going to be a nine-yard pickup and a first down as Dwayne Stewart makes the catch, takes the hit, and hangs on. First and goal, going to be a handoff to Vincent, and Vincent is going to pick up the seven-yard touchdown run right there. Ray Vincent with his first rushing touchdown of the game, and that is going to make it a 14-7 ball game. So here comes Brandon Flowers and the Georgia State Panthers on the ensuing kickoff return. Flowers to the outside. He's got some room to run. He's going to get past one man. He's got one man to beat. He's going to be brought down, but not before he reaches about the 45-yard line, and it's a very impressive return that will give Georgia State some great field position to work with. Gerald House up the middle on the handoff. He's going to pick up a nice chunk right there, 21 yards on the gain. And that is going to give us a new first down inside of the 25-yard line. Triple read option coming up. Fake handoff. Pitch to Linquest Blair on the outside. And Blair's going to pick up about 10 yards. That will set up a third in inches. Here we go now on first and goal later in the drive. Straight handoff to Gerald House. And House picks up his first rushing touchdown of the game. So three rushing touchdowns from this Georgia State offense from three different players. As House picks up his first of the game. And that will make it a 21-7 ball game now as Georgia State looks to pull away here before the end of the half. Shannon Church dropping back, scrambling to the left. It's going to be intercepted by Joseph Peterson. And that is going to be a crucial turnover for FCS Southeast as we get the ball back with great field position here. And now enough time left for Ronnie Bill to make something happen. He scrambles to the outside, avoids the tackle. He's crossed the 25-20, runs out of bounds, 23-yard pickup through the ground with Ronnie Bell. Here's a little triple read option. Bill splits the defense somehow. But he's going to pitch it away. He will recover, but he will lose 12 yards on the gain. So second and 22 coming up. 16 seconds to play. Bell dropping back, firing it deep. That's called in by Sweeting. That's right, Avery Sweeting. What a name. What a sweetie. That is going to give us a first and goal here with 10 seconds left. Ronnie Bell fires to the left side, caught by Jordan Giles. And it's our first touchdown through the air today as we make it a 28-7 ball game. So a crucial turnover by Shannon Church of the FCS Southeast Pirates. That will lead to a 7-point touchdown for the Georgia State Panthers, and it is now a 28-7 ball game as we head into the half. Georgia State well in control, looking dominant against this inferior FCS team. Let's see if they can keep it up for the second half. Obviously, this is not really as much of a talent mismatch as you might think based off of, you know, obviously an FBS team playing an FCS team, but a very well-coached Georgia State team and a very well-disciplined Georgia State team looking good so far today. So we pick it up here as it is second and six. Ronnie Bell fires to the left side, caught by Ross Jackson, and Jackson will pick up 16 more yards on the gain. That's going to cross midfield, first and ten coming up for the Panthers, and here's a straight handoff to Gerald House to the outside. House cuts back in, and he's going to pick up nine yards on the gain. Another nice pickup for Gerald House to the ground. Ronnie Bell dropping back third and 12, looking. This is going to be deflected and incomplete. Ronnie Bell's third incompletion of the game. A very great day through the air so far for him today. We're going to bring out our kicker, Will Lutz, and Lutz is going to kick this one up, and it is good. So we make it a 31-7 game now. And it is a 24-point ball game. So we got another studio update coming. And Yuva Lafayette has pulled off the upset. They travel to Mississippi and beat Ole Miss in their home stadium. So that might be an opponent to look out for later in the year. Shannon Church right there is going to fumble it. That's recovered by Stetzer. The third turnover of the game for the Pirates. And Georgia State takes over once again. Let's see what the Panthers can do with it. Ronnie Bell dropping back. Firing it deep to the end zone. Intercepted by Miller. And this game could be turning into a turnover fest here. 5.56 to play in the game. This one looks to be all but over, but anyway, second and 10 coming up for the Panthers later in the game after we forced a punt away from the Pirates. Bell scrambling to his right. He's going to step up and try to scramble himself for some yards. He's going to end up getting tackled and fumbles. Recovered by Brock, and the Pirates take over. Another fumble, another turnover. Five total on the day so far. Let's see if the Panthers can try to stop them right here. Shannon Church dropping back. He's going to buy some time finally step up and throw intercepted by Joseph Peterson another turnover as this game got very sloppy towards the end both teams kind of realized the game the score was pretty much settled and uh, I don't know it's just time for some experimentation time for you know doing whatever and 
we kind of just took that to heart a little too much. So here we go now. The Panthers offense taking over. We're going to play it a little bit more safe here. Safer, I should say. And we will run the ball right there. So third and three coming up. Ronnie Bell is going to drop back, fire it. Caught by Jordan Giles, who will run up the middle inside of the 10-yard line before being brought down. Third and goal coming up for the Panthers. 205 to play. Bell empty backfield. He's going to look. Can't really find anyone. He's going to scramble to his right. He will be brought down, losing 15 yards on the gain. So that sets up fourth and goal for Will Lutz in the field goal unit. This kick is up, and it is good. That will make it a 34-7 ball game as it is now a 27-point lead for the Panthers. And that is pretty much going to wrap up this game as the Pirates would get the ball back and the clock would run out from there. So we end up winning this ball game in a grand style. Well, not grand style, but we really did uh, open up a can of whooping on them, so to say. And, you know, we just took care of business. So a good game from Georgia State. A bit sloppy at the end, but I think that can be easily fixed. That's pretty much going to wrap up this video for me. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And so I'm out. Peace.